more likely that it would take the hydrogen from the the carbon with more hydrogens? I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that. He's thinking like an organic chemist. Very good. That's the exact question that an organic chemist would ask. So I said that the regiochemistry was that there's more than one hydrogen we can take, but an organic chemist wouldn't be satisfied with that. They would ask your question and ask, which one does it prefer to take? Well, the mechanism should explain that. Um, I think you were, you were maybe taking a guess. Do you see any way here to, ex to explain, is it going to be easier to take the terminal hydrogen or the internal hydrogen? Well, I was thinking that it would take the, the external hydrogen not because there's three, but because it gives chlorine more space, I guess, to... Steric hindrance issues. Yeah. Okay. So you're focusing on steric hindrance. That's not bad. However, remember, what's the other big factor besides steric hindrance? Uh, the other big factor is oh, electronics. Charges, yeah. Electronics. Now, there are no charges here, but there, there are electronics because we have radicals. So when the chlorine takes a hydrogen, it produces a carbon radical. When the chlorine takes a hydrogen, it produces a uh, carbon radical, which can be considered a matter of electronics. We have to stabilize this radical as much as we can. It's more stabilized on the secondary. That's the key. Yeah. It's more stabilized down here. Yeah. That's right. So, it, based on that, who would the chlorine prefer to take? The second. Yeah, it would prefer to take this one because it forms the more, <clears throat> the more substituted uh, radical. Yeah. Now, so uh, it sounds like you're already remembering that substitution with carbon chains stabilizes radicals. We haven't talked about that, but maybe you've already learned that. Um, why is that? Well, is a radical electron poor or electron rich? Electron, well, the radical itself? Yeah. I don't know, I mean, I would say electron rich, but it's also. I can help you to think about it's that. It's poor because it's not a, a whole orbital, right? I mean, That's right. That's why it's electron poor. Okay. It's electron poor because it has only one electron where it wants a pair. It's electron poor because where it wants a pair, it has only one electron. Even though it doesn't have a positive charge, it has an unpaired electron and it wants to get a paired electron. So it is electron poor. So it wants to be surrounded by electron donors. Well, carbon chains we just have memorized are electron donors. Alkyl groups are electron donors. We're just going to memorize that. Carbon chains are electron donors. That's why the more substituted carbocation is more stable because it's stabilized by the carbon chains and that's also why the more substituted radical is more stable because it's also stabilized by the carbon chains. So substitution with carbon chains stabilizes radicals and carbocations. So which hydrogen will halogens prefer to take? Well one argument would say they would prefer to take the one that makes the more substituted radical. Uh, sadly, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and you actually were remembering the other issue. There are more hydrogens that are terminal here than internal. After all, there's three hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, and three hydrogens here, right? Um, so, in total, there are six of this type of hydrogen, and there's only four of this type of hydrogen. Does that make sense? Six of this type and four of this type? So statistically speaking, just based on chance, the chlorine is more likely to take this hydrogen. So we have two different arguments. Based on statistics, you're more likely to take this terminal hydrogen. Based on stability of the radical, you're more likely to take this hydrogen. Well, which one wins out kind of depends on the mathematics of the situation. Um, so in some cases, you'd actually have to work out the mathematics to see which one would work out. I don't know if your class is actually going to require you to do that, so maybe we're not going to go into the details of that. Um, however, one thing we should say is some halogens are more selective than others. That is, some halogens really prefer to form the more substituted radical, and some halogens don't care very much. Basically, the more, reactive the, halo um, the more unreactive the halogen is, the more help it needs from a stabilized radical. And the more reactive the halogen is, it doesn't, it, a really reactive halogen doesn't really need a stabilized radical because it's so reactive anyway. So remember, here's the type of halogens that go through radical halogenation. Uh, what type of halogen do you think of as being the most reactive? Fluorine, chlorine, or bromine? Bromine. Let's see, I guess it would depend on the reaction, but it's really fluorine here, because remember, fluorine is the most electronegative. Yeah. Uh, maybe instead of looking at it this way, I should have drawn it like this. Maybe that wasn't good. I should have asked which of these radicals is the most reactive. Well, all of these want to gain an extra electron, but
But who wants an extra electron the most? Fluorine, because that's the most electronegative element in the whole periodic table. It's really, it's really frustrating that it doesn't have a full octet. So this is the most reactive. This is the least reactive. Bromine doesn't like having an unpaired electron, but it's so far down the periodic table, it's not nearly as electronegative as fluorine, so it can bear it more. Where would iodine fit in? Very reactive or very unreactive? Is it below bromine? Uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. If you look at the table, iodine yeah. is below bromine in the periodic table. So not reactive that we were we see it in a... Yeah, that's why it doesn't do these radical halogenations. It's so unreactive that it doesn't really do these halogenations in the first place. So which of these is going to be the most selective for secondary hydrogens? Which of these needs the most help and would be most selective for substituted? The fluorine. I'm sorry? The fluorine? No? How many Take your time. It's the most reactive, so it needs the most stable radical, I would think. Because this is so reactive, this can it take pretty much any hydrogen. Out. Okay. Yeah. The boron. The, bor the, the bromine. bromine. The bromine. Don't confuse that with yeah. boron. The, That's right. The bromine. Most selective. This is the most reactive. So it's the least selective. When I say most selective, I mean the most selective for substituted carbons. So basically, the fluorine here is in such a big hurry to get an electron that it's not going to wait until it bumps into a secondary carbon. It's just going to take the first hydrogen it bumps into. But it's more likely to bump into these terminal hydrogens because there was more of them, right? So probably with the fluorine, the major product will definitely be taking the terminal hydrogen. Because this is going to take the first hydrogen it bumps into, and it's more likely to bump into the six hydrogens on the ends than the four hydrogens in the middle. On the other hand, bromine is not nearly as reactive. Um, it's going to maybe wait a little bit, wait a little bit, so it can form a more substituted carbo, uh, more substituted radical. So even though it's going to bump into these terminal hydrogens more often because there's more of them, it's not always going to grab them because they're going to form something that's too unstable. Instead, it might wait until it bumps into the secondary hydrogen. So if you were dealing with the bromine, definitely the major product would be this one. So dealing with the fluorine, definitely this would be the major product. This would definitely be the major product for fluorine. And dealing with the bromine, these would definitely be the major products. Chlorine, you kind of have to work out the math. And uh, some classes require you to do that. But I didn't see any problems in yeah. there that required you to do that. So but you may just ask a multiple choice. Right. How about tertiary radicals? Would bromine like those or not like those? He would, he would like them. Yeah, here we only did primary and secondary, but the bromine would most like to form a tertiary radical if it could, whereas fluorine doesn't care that much. It's just going to probably um, make a main product of the hydrogens that there's the most of. So those are, there's two factors. There's the statistical factor and the selectivity factor. Well, for, flu for fluorine, statistics is most important. It just matters which of hydrogens there's the most number. But for bromine, selectivity is more important, forming the more substituted. And chlorine uh, depends on the, the details. It's intermediate between these. OK. So if he asked you to draw all possible products, then you would draw this one, this one, and this one. If he asked you to draw the major product, well, for fluorine, you would draw this, and for bromine, you would draw this. And he probably wouldn't ask you that for chlorine, because that might be beyond the scope of your course. So you have to pay close attention on these halogenation problems as to whether they're asking for the major product or all possible products. mistakes people make is in the second propagation step. People remember that they have to attach a chlorine here, and they try to attach the chlorine radical instead of atta attaching the non-chlorine. So that's just something to especially highlight. Um, this is a propagation step, so we have a radical attacking a non-radical. It's only in a termination step. 
that you would have a radical attacking the chlorine radical. That's maybe one of the steps where people are most likely to, to get confused. And then watch for all the different regions where the halogen could attack, and watch for whether there's uh, you're making a stereo dissension.